Yes, now family, I'm all welcome back to another video on Jazz TV. It's not Jazz TV, it's, it's just YouTube. So, welcome to another video. Today, we want to talk about things that you don't know that you don't know when you're an amateur and you're turning professional. A lot of fighters don't understand what they don't yet know. So, I'm going to touch on a few topics and just elaborate a little bit and to give you a bit of understanding on what to expect when this thing happens to you makes no sense right now but it will the first one to talk about is 12 rounds a bit shaky that camera there isn't it it's all right though it's okay but the first one we're going to talk about is 12 rounds because when you're at amateur you fight i think it's three three minutes right now that's what it is but when i was at amateur when i was at amateur back in the day so it was four two minute rounds oh no wait it's actually my last fight was three three minute rounds to changed the abas in 2010 that year they changed the amateur system from four two minute rounds to three three minute rounds and that was my last year as an amateur you had six senior fights and then turn professional when you turn professional you don't have three 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 round fights anymore you go to four minimum so on some occasions to save the journeyman from getting too much of an iron they'll have a six two minute round but Mostly it's a four three minute rounds. That's your first first one. You've got four threes, six threes, eight threes, ten threes, and then fights at uh, 12 threes, fight, well, real fights, title fights. Championship fights at 12 three minute rounds. It used to be 15, but the um, they shortened that. Kim something versus Ray, Ray Mancini. You think he died and, and they shortened the rounds from 15 to 12. But anyway, yeah, so when you're an amateur, you can fight for three three minute rounds and you can be so tired <laughs> it's mad because you are as tired doing three three minute rounds as an amateur as you are doing 12 three minute rounds as a professional it doesn't make no sense how does that make sense but you are you just are i don't know how maybe you just know the pace to set is, is a lot different and you see when you turn professional and you're a pro for a few years and then you spar with an amateur you think fucking hell that pace is high oh shouldn't be swearing there my daughter told me off my daughter watched the channel the other day she, she told me off for swearing so you think that pace is really high i shouldn't um it shouldn't be so hard to keep up with that pace but then you forget you're a 12 round fighter you're not fighting at a three round pace but my experience on going to 12 rounds you start looking at the my first few fights, I started looking at the uh, the ring card. Girl was walking around the ring and uh, holding the um, the numbers, what rounds it was going into. And my first experience was that says eight. Does that mean I'm going into eight, or I've just done eight? And you start getting confused <laughs> because you're so fatigued and stuff like that. That was my first few experiences as a as a twelve round fighter, and um, it's just different because now you're not fighting. Off carbohydrates you're fighting off nothing really because you've got to fight at a high pace when you work at a low intensity you, you your body burns fats and when you work at a high intensity your body burns carbs but you know you could be 40 minutes into a into a fight and um, now you've got no glycogen it's called carbs you've got no carbs left in you so you think to yourself what am i fighting on there you know some fighters you're fighting on nothing really when it comes to energy storage obviously your body can um, use its stores energy and it must be but that, that you're fighting on nothing so that's what you don't know that you don't yet know that you're going to be fighting on nothing so get used to it do it in the gym do it on long runs do it on faster runs it's good to get used to it to understand how you're going to be fighting because some fighters think this is me i'm done but then you get another gear they say you go through the gears you get another level you get another energy source somewhere along the line and you go into the rounds 10 11 and 12 and then you get another gear so yeah that's something you don't know that you don't know another one is so simple this this one what got me <laughs> i was fighting in just like <laughs> turn up in my house girls rocks i didn't understand like just turning up in in any in any socks or what it can, it can do your feet in. i remember fighting in a title fight <laughs> and i was in agony me, <laughs> you don't feel pain in a fight but every time i move my feet my feet were killing me, me the blister 
a, a toe size blister on both of my big toes had come off. There was no skin on both big toes, and I'm fighting and moving on my big toes, and the pain was horrendous. <laughs> I've got the picture somewhere. I probably won't even attach it because it was disgusting. But I've got no skin on, on both both toes, so just just understanding how you do your socks, do them in the gym, <laughs> do them every day, and 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 get used to how you're gonna put your socks on in in fight night because sometimes you fight and then you get these brand new fighting socks and then you're not used to them so even with your boots you know get used to your boots wear your boots in like three weeks before the fight and stop do a few sessions in them and then get used to them because if you get them blisters on your toes in fight night it can be a distraction another one that amateur and professionals it looks the same the sport looks the same but it's but it's not the same because the gloves Eight ounce as an amateur glove and an eight ounce, eight ounce as a professional glove. I think I've never weighed the both of them to see if they're both eight, eight ounce, but the foam must be a lot lighter than the amateur glove because it's crazy. You you could use an amateur glove to spar with as a professional because there's there's so much padding in them. You you never feel the knuckle, but when you turn professional and you've got no head guards on, by the way. Vaseline is your new head guard. <laughs> if you're gonna get head protection, it's Vaseline, that's it. It's not a head guard anymore. So your gloves are now just two inches from your head. There's an inch from your head and then there's two inches on your gloves. Exactly, it's a little bit there, two inches. Two inches is a lot. If any, <laughs> every man knows two inches is a lot. So an inch off your head and then two inches off the gloves, you're three inches out now your distance you need to adapt your distance that's one thing i struggle with my first fight is gonna jab and i'm i missed the, it, it landed like there and you think wow bloody hell is he further away from it is he deceptive in his footwork or his movements or am i just used to landing with the knuckle part of my glove on his head guard and that's what i found out like you need to get a little bit closer to land your shots and the gloves the difference in the glove from an amateur glove Sometimes you get it full, it'd have to be full force as an amateur to feel any sort of flash or something like that. But as a professional, you feel the knuckle, you actually feel the, the knuckle through through the lead and the glove. <laughs> you feel it around your kite. <laughs> and wherever it lands, sometimes, sometimes like after a fight, you get a shower. <laughs> and you you washing your head like that with your fingers? It's so sore, and you think I won't I won't like um, <laughs> I won't go that that part of to just stay unwashed. <laughs> and so and you get coggies everywhere, and the coggies are from I did it one time in the forest, <laughs> and the next day it was just a foreign coggy right in the middle of my forehead, and and that's what happens because it's just because the the impact area is that much and now as a professional it's that much you know so yeah that's one thing that you don't expect as an amateur it's pretty common sense isn't it as, as when you're watching it but when you're coming through the ranks and you and you're wearing these big gloves you don't expect it another one that threw me off i didn't understand i thought i was thought i was the man thought i was marvin Agler. i've got a pair of shorts made out of suede <laughs> when i when i went through the rounds later on in the rounds you collect some water on them and he becomes so heavy. I've worn leather shorts as well. <laughs> leather, you gimp. Leather shorts, a little bit different because they're heavy to start off with, but they never get heavy, heavier because the water just doesn't stick to them, just bounces off them because it's leather. But with the suede shorts, they get heavier and heavier and heavier. <laughs> like a big old sponge in the ends. They're hanging off your ass and you're trying to pull them back up. So I would say if you're going to get suede shorts get them short suede shorts don't get them long because they just get heavier and heavier and heavier leather shorts they're okay you know where you are with them they're still heavy but they, they're not going to get any heavier another one that that does sort of throw a lot of fighters off is sleeping patterns because we had this recently with francis and garni he said he went he I think he said that he was around all night for the end joshua fight and he was tired going into the ring but sometimes so from my experience you wake up at 8am because you're in a routine and you've been getting up at 8 o'clock every single day and then now it's fight day and you're, you're getting up at 8 o'clock you get to the venue you drive to the venue you get get in the venue you sit down could be 6 o'clock you get your bandages on 
right jazz you're not on till 10 you're gonna be on at such eight o'clock something like that but some fighters you might be the live float i've been the live float the live float is where it's a televised show and if any of the fights get cut get knocked out early then you you're the you're the standing to save the time because people don't want to watch your bed for 40 minutes so they have to put a fight on in between and that's the live float the live float can be great or it can be terrible it's never in between because you can get the live float and you go on right before the main event i was on a ricky atten undercard thousands of people probably millions watching and i was the live float i thought i might get on here just before ricky and i never and then it went on after Ricky and the MEN arena was empty and it was just my mates in there there must have been a hundred of people in there but before it, it was thousands and um, after that I realised bloody hell the live floats and we went on we must have been about half twelve at night you went on technically you're not allowed to go on at half twelve because the next day then and then you should be the venue's closed they've only hired it for that day but half twelve in the night and I got up early that morning so half 12 8 o'clock you got four, 16 hours you're awake there and then you're gonna fight so it's a bit mad isn't it so that's one thing fighters should start to, when they get closer to the fight start training a little bit later in the night maybe 8 o'clock 9 o'clock 10 o'clock in the night no because that's the time you're gonna fight to get your body used to training or fighting or performing at this time and then um, try and go to bed a little bit later I go to bed at like 1 o'clock because I'm, I, if I'm get if I want to fight at ten o'clock, I don't want to be getting up till at least one o'clock. So it's a bit odd, and it's a bit hard to do sometimes. But it does it does benefit you when when you're feeling fresh and you're fighting at the time that you're normally fighting at, and you new you new hourly um, schedule. Another one that what does tie into the last one there? That fight I had on the weekend and on the card, I was happy that it was at half twelve. I went to first. I've had it other times where it's like ah. Oh, Half, half 12 at night I boxed on a David Price on the card live float once again hopefully you want to get on at prime time and it never happens so I thought at half 12 at night again maybe me and 1 o'clock they would argue not to get on my opponents didn't even want to fight so they were trying not to get on and I was saying get in the ring I, <laughs> get in the ring we were saying backstage you better get in the ring I've trained for this so I want, I want to get the rounds so what happened I thought I had the fight as soon as the the, announce, the announcement was called the lights went out so it was just pitch black and I was still in the ring it was pitch black and the people were sweeping up so back to what I was saying went off a bit there tonight so back to what I was saying about the Ricky Atten card I'd weighed in on the day before for this fight and these day before weigh-ins were quite new to me I'd always fought weigh in and then you fight two hours after that that's what it's always been one time i fought in a european championships and you weigh in and you fight five times in four days so you're weighing in every single day and then fighting two hours later put on a kilo and a half two kilogram and then lose it again at night and that was the the thing every day but now you, you're weighing in you're weighing in at like 2 p.m on a friday and then you're fighting well, for me it was half 12 on a Saturday that's what is that that's for 30 34 hours 34 hour weigh-ins it's a lot of time so I just thought because because I had the day before weighing I've got 30 30 about well, just call it 28 hours to to rehydrate I'll kill myself a little bit more to make the weight I've got a bit more weight to play with it doesn't work like that because what you take out of yourself sometimes there's a point that you go too too far and you can't get it back in it's impossible to get it back in into your brain and when you get it in the head it's like it's like you you can feel it. it there's no water in your brain and you can feel it your head's bouncing everywhere that's how it feels inside your brain's all over the place so i would advise fighters to not go too mad on on thinking that you've got more time to play with the um <laughs> with the weight you haven't it's a stupid mistake it took me a long long time to learn it i made the same mistake time and time again and then he ends up moving up a weight so what i found was i would go and go and weigh in and after the weigh in i used to think that i could just eat anything that i wanted to so i go to like <laughs> I, I remember going from a weigh in to a, an indian and eating indian 
and it, like it's just many mad things like that i go to the ice the night before and i get pancakes nutella ice and frosting peanut butter and just have it <laughs> me and my mate paddy we both say now we're still carbs up from that way in that we had one time because <laughs> we just ate and ate and ate on the way home and then the next day of this fight when i fought on the ricky at an undercard I'd, i went to my father's house i was just potting around he had nowhere to be so i went to my dad's house and him and his mates having a barbecue and he said do you want a what was it a hot dog or a burger or something and i said of course i do i can i can have what i want so I saw so him eating this burger or his hot dog or something, whatever it was, I don't know what it was. But the next day I was food poisoned. So I was crippled the pain of food poison on a fight day, especially. I don't know if anyone's been poisoned, food poisoned, but the pain it's crippling the stuff. <laughs> it's so bad. And then, um, yeah, the next day I was driving up there and I was thinking if I get it in the belly, yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> I don't even 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 speaking to people made me made in the head it was hard to even talk to people never mind getting it in the belly and i knew it was going to fight <laughs> so i was glad that the fight was getting put back and put back and put back by the time i got on half 12 it was still painful it was sore <laughs> but <laughs> it was a fucking nightmare that fight to be honest but it i got in there anyway and i kept putting them over i kept putting them down and he was an angry little bastard and it weren't hurting him, I was just dropping him, but it weren't hurting him, he was an angry little bastard. <laughs> and we both went on the floor at one point, we wrestled each other to the floor. <laughs> and before we got up, he kicked me in the ass. <laughs> I was getting off the canvas, he was still on the canvas, and as hard as he could, he volleyed me up the ass. <laughs> and it didn't make me angry, it made me laugh because I thought, wow, this is fucking madness, this. How he just got away with that? And then, um, <laughs> and uh, and I done the same thing again. I dropped him again because he he had no way in balance. <laughs> he was dead small, and every time he he jumped in at me, he had his feet weren't touching the floor. So every time he hit me, he was just going on his back, <laughs> and he was getting dead angry about it. But anyway, that was an um, an eye opener. Don't be eating crap after the weigh-in. Save it till after the fight. You've got all the time in the world. Just save it don't be like a dog that goes to the bowl and he can't stop eating like i was one more what always does get people is being called out when you first get it when they come from amateur scene and then you turn professional it makes good business and it makes good sense and it makes especially in this day and age with social media and things like that if your name's not in the limelight people are looking at somebody else's name obviously but when people start calling you out it, it can be coming uh, when it first happened to me i used to think like <laughs> i'm not proud to say this but i used to like think at night i'm gonna go and run them over <laughs> who's he talking to I, i'm gonna drive over to his gym and run him over <laughs> i knew i weren't gonna do it but i didn't know i don't know why i was this angry anyway i was probably just chatting shit because i was so angry because I, I don't think I, <laughs> i'm not that guy i'll turn up and run you over you take it too personal you know what I mean? you take it very very personal when when people are pulling it out as a professional you should take that as a compliment it's a it's a very good compliment if someone is calling you out because people don't call you out when you're not doing well they're calling you out because it benefits them it saves a lot if someone's calling you out you know what i mean then you get everyone <laughs> all your mates and all the people around you you're gonna let them do that you want to let them do that and your ego can get carried away so if you're gonna look on doing well in this game don't strive for good messages in a sad way you've got to strive for bad messages because that's when they come when you're doing really well one that people just cannot get their head around when, when it comes to professional boxing is something called a ticket deal. So, people will say to you, you're a professional boxer, are you, bloody hell? You must be making a few quid and things like that. But when people starting out, I was lucky enough, I had a good amateur career, so I turned professional with a good, with a, with a decent CV. So I didn't have to do this, but sometimes I have had to do this in the past when you're building yourself back up from a loss or you just haven't got the time to wait on a date so you say i'll just take a ticket deal here or there or whatever so a fight a ticket deal is when a fighter is fighting on a professional show when it's not televised these promoters don't have the money to pay everyone but they have to cover the revenue somehow so what they do they give the fighters the tickets and the fighters sell the tickets the revenue they make off the tickets they then split that money 
with the promoter and they take a deal a 50 50 ticket deal could be 60 40 could be 70 30 depending on this fighter and how much he sells unfortunately if you're a fighter and you don't sell enough tickets to cover you your opponent and the, the slot fee you have to pay to be on the show probably 900 quid thousand quid you have to pay 1500 quid for your opponent <coughs> two and a half it's opponent's hotel opponent hotels for the opponent's coaches so you're talking three thousand pounds in ticket terms that's to under the tickets if you don't sell it under the tickets to your friends and family you haven't even broken broken even so if you sell it under the one ticket your 50 50 split on this fight is 15 pounds so a lot of people don't understand this and the shock when you tell them that you've just earned you've sold 101 tickets to come and see you fight or what and then you you've made up 15 pounds <laughs> and also if you didn't cover that then the cost then there is no fight so i take my hat off to these small hall promoters and these fighters who are working working their way up on these small hall shows because it's not easy and that's that's the reality of it so some fighters who are trying ads on social media and stuff like that and they get a lot of abuse and they get a lot of hate <laughs> a lot of these kids aren't even making a penny so it's the hardest job in the world give them a break have a day off will you so far Malamo, that was a few things that you didn't know that you didn't know but now you know so thank you for watching like and subscribe and leave a comment so i get loads of money once again you have a lovely day family